Hola, ¿cómo estás? Cuida el tren. El Hola. tren, sí. Buenos días. Buenos días. Look at the horses too. Mighty excited about the train. This train looks much actually more intriguing than the one I was on. It's also Peru Rail, so the same company. But as, as I passed this train on my motorbike, it just looked more interesting inside. This might be the luxury one, the one that's $600 or something. Rich Americans. Shall we say hello to the horses whilst here? Hello there. Do you speak English? How about you? Guess not. Maybe it's like me, you don't like to talk in the mornings. I'll be on my way then. It's a 20 minute drive and then I'll be at some epic ruins. Here we go. Well, hello there. Having a good day? I assume so. I'm about, I'd say 20 minutes from my destination. And that's all I have to say about that. Because it's early morning and I do not have anything to say. Because nothing has happened. And my brain is probably running at 5% of its normal capacity. And bear in mind, its normal capacity isn't that great to begin with. We are edging closer to Ulia Tantamba. But I thought this little town, whatever it's called, warrants a little filming. It's very unique. The road, uh, the road, the houses, and the walls, everything is made from the same material. Essentially these stones that are not the easiest to, to drive on. Hold on, it's going to be problematic. Yeah, here you can see uh, the houses. No difference from the wall. It kind of merges in to the road and then the wall opposite. Crazy. But I have a truck behind me, so I have to speed up. Gracias. Maybe this is Ulia Tan Tambo. I don't know, but wow. Look at this. Love it. If I didn't have the truck behind me, I would stop. Oh yeah, this must be it. I think I am here actually, stupid me. Oh, this place is amazing. Let's get some food and then we will trek up to the ruins up there. See you then. So the pizza has arrived. It looks like this. And it is um, absolutely horrendous. I think it's the worst pizza I've ever had. Uh, I think actually this is the worst country I've ever been to for food, maybe apart from Bolivia. But it's sustenance, and I need something if I'm gonna trek up there. So I'm gonna force it down. This is awesome. Wall, road, wall, made of the exact same fabrics. Oh, Corona! <laughs> Are you gonna work with a six pack? And Stella? <laughs> Where do you work? Traba oh wow. <laughs> Don't stay in that house guys. 
when you come here. I'm trying to make my way up actually to the least visited ruins, as you can see on that side. I'm gonna go there first. Oh, what a place. Is this it? This can't be the way. Maybe ask this guy. Boy! Boy! <laughs> si, si! This way? Mas arriba! Okay, gracias! Recha means straight. Wow, what a cool place! River or sewer? Who knows? Either way, I'm down for a swim. One of you guys wrote me, or it may have been a comment, and you said that this is one of the coolest cities you had ever seen or been to. And I didn't, didn't believe it, because I haven't seen a single even city here <laughs> since I left Cusco. Every place that I drive through, it's more or less just 100, 200 abandoned houses and a bus station. But no, this is... Uh, oh, I must be here. This is an actual city. Pottery? No. Oh, another dog. So you're gonna attack me like the other one? Hola. Hola. Aqua. Quanto cuesta? Dos soles. Dos soles. Okay, that's a deal. Do we have the nece necesario? Sí, necesario, muy necesario. This one, este dos. Es Gracias. Ya, amigo. Thank you. Yeah. I think we are here. I thought she was going to yell at me for some ticket or something, so... Hello there. I'm friend of dog. That's right. But I may smell like cat. Okay. I only have one battery with me today. So I'm going to... Save it. Once we can get a good view, I'll start telling you about the Incas and the Spanish. Jesus. And afterwards, we're gonna go to those main ruins. It was actually a fort. But more on that later. So let's continue to the top. Oh, you coming from up there or are you going up? You're going up. Okay. <laughs> Thought maybe you'd given up. Are you resting too? Yes, waiting for my husband. He's up. He's up there. Yes. Oh. You see, it's not just me that's tired on these trails. <laughs> bit of a wind situation here. When the Spanish came here, this was a fort. I'm obviously going to go all the way up, but we'll start from here. I'm not sure if both sides were a fort, but quite possibly they both were. This is the beginning of the trek up. So yes, the Incas did have forts, not up to European standards, but keep in mind that the Incas, when the Spanish arrived, they had conquered the whole known world to them. From north to south to the uh, border where the Amazon starts and you enter Brazil. There, a people called, let me see if I can remember this name. Why don't I remember this name? There's a Quechua word, for East, that they used to call these tribes. And the Incas, who were adapted for high altitude, like these mountains, they did not, they feared the Amazon jungle people and they wanted nothing to do with them. So they didn't continue their conquests. Hola. Hola. They did not continue their conquests in that direction. 
So with these structures here, they probably felt mighty secure before Pizarro and his 200 men rode in here. Well, only 60 of them, 68 rode. The rest were men on foot. Oh, this is so cool. There's no signs telling you, you can't go here, don't walk here. Quite possibly, crenellations, I don't know. Could be. Probably a watchtower as well over there. There is actually graffiti here, but I assume it's modern. Definitely has all the hallmarks of a defensive structure, no doubt. Actually, I saw a... Oh, no, hold on. We can go... We can go further up here. For the past five minutes, I've been furious at myself for why I couldn't remember what the Incas called the Amazon tribes that they didn't want to touch and didn't want to even try and conquer because they were very skilled with a crossbow. They used to call them the Quechua word for East, which is Antes. So they had conquered the whole known world and up until where the Antes lived, Amazon jungle tribes. Not sure how that fits into what I'm going to talk about now, but okay. At least I remembered. I was so brave down there, thinking, oh wow, I trekked much further two days ago. But then you start your trek and you begin to remember how hard it is, especially when you're not eating properly. Surely this can't be the conventional way. Stop. What matters is we're moving up. I don't see anyone up there, but I am going to do my best to traverse this trail and end up... I can at least go up there and maybe there's some shady footpath so I can sneak across to those houses. I don't see anyone there, but rest assured, if anyone's ever going to go there, it's me. Almost level. Okay, so the conventional trail stops or goes here. So I'm gonna have to brave it off road if I wanna get there. So let's see how far I can go. Yep, we're on our way. Oh, 
Jesus. It's gonna be hell going down. I'm just around, about to go around this bend and we'll see if it ends here. Oh no, oh yes. Yep. It worked. See you in there. As I turned around, I see a couple, which means there's an easier path than the one I took, because no way, there's a woman. I don't think she would go on that trail. Are you saying women couldn't do that? No, it's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that, Jesus, these structures are sublime. Can you believe that they're still here after 600 years? Let's go through here. Certainly looks like crenellations to me. So you could stand here. At least the idea of crenellations in the European sense is that you can be covered from incoming fire and then you can step out. And But since the Incas didn't really use the crossbow, I guess maybe they stood here with a spear. I don't know, it's strange. I didn't, in, in the books I've read, I've not come across any stories. That concludes that they had crenellations on their defensive walls. Should we see inside as well? There's one with the roof intact. Wow. If you're wondering why I'm not telling stories, it's just, I'm taking this in myself. And if I'm gonna tell a story, I have to concentrate. Let me get, reach higher ground and I will tell you how the Incas sent traps to attack Christian priests. It's raining muff, hallelujah, it's raining muff, hey, hey, it's raining muff, hallelujah, it's raining muff, hey, hey, you heard me. So the Incas, being the rulers of the known world, with only the Pacific Ocean to the west and the Antis in the Amazon jungle to the east, were obviously very bewildered about these strange creatures coming from faraway land, well, Europe, Spain, just coming here and conquering them, vastly, vastly outnumbered. And in that regard, I have a funny story about religion because a lot of Incas and other tribes suspected that the European religion was stronger and that's why these uh, Spaniards were able to come here and conquer them so they decided to put this to the test very often when you came to a city you actually can't you can't call what pe most people lived in back then cities but villages little settlement and so on but anyway they decided to try and see how strong the Christian faith were so in these villages very often the first Spanish uh, resident or Spaniards to live in little villages 
would be men of the cloth. That's right. Priests preaching the gospel. One man, one woman, family life, and all the, the blessings of Christianity. Note my sarcasm. And so they, the Incas came up with a plan. They decided to try and tempt the, the very harbingers and, and uh, preachers of this so-called superior Christian faith. Can I walk through here? No. Into sin. So they picked their finest women. And according to the author, that didn't mean highland women with dark skin. It meant um, uh, fair-skinned, low-altitude beauties. Those were the most sought-after women in, in Inca civilization, according to this author. Well, check out these, these walls. So, these women, their goal was to... Whoa, turn the camera around here. Hold on. If there's a hard route, then we take the hard route. So yeah, they, their goal was to tempt the priests into sin. So they slotted themselves up. They tried every trick in the book <laughs> to outright jumping the priest and starting to hump him and so on. And apparently it didn't work according to the source that I read. And uh, in, in some of the villages that tried this, they obviously concluded then that these, these otherworldly uh, creatures from Europe were, uh, you couldn't move them, you couldn't, couldn't sway them into sin and so on. Now that isn't entirely true. There were plenty of priests back then who had hundreds of concubines, for lack of a better word. That's right, priests with concubines. This was a free-for-all for the first conquistadors and the men of the cloth that came. But that wasn't necessarily the norm, but it happened. Uh, but the author that again quoted this story I just told you now, he had a more, a more rational explanation. Apparently, in Peruvian society, 600 years ago, they had uh, trans people. And these, they used to dress flamboyantly and uh, not unlike, I think we can say, people who are in pride parades today like to dress a bit more challengingly and kind of flaunt their, their uh, S-E-X-U-A-L-I-T-Y. Gotta confuse the algorithm, right babe? Then the general population at large. And so he, uh, the author that I read, he just concluded that these, these were Spanish authors and people, priests and people who saw what happened to the priests confusing, uh, I guess the modern <laughs> phenomenon of a pride parade and, uh, and, and, and that community with, uh, with, um, with, actual, with actual women. So uh, take the story for what it is worth. It's an interesting bit of trivia, nonetheless. There is one plateau, hold on. I did record that, damn, battery. We're struggling for battery life. Another interesting trivia with regards to religion was that in Inca myth and folklore, there was a tale about gods coming from the sea. And if not conquering them, at least coming in and with, with, uh, uh, yeah, I guess with conquest in mind. And that would be the demise of their civilization here. And according to, again, many authors, uh, a lot of that acted as a, as a demotivating factor for many people here who wanted to, to fight back because they believed in these myths. And the myth said that tall men would come from the sea. And they did. <laughs> Damn, I lost my train of thought. I may or may not have had a point with that story. Either way, hopefully the point was made. I love these ruins. Uh, there was a guy downstairs, a woman, and she said she could 
tell me about this place if I wanted to for 50 solas I may or may not take her up on that offer I was not too impressed with a guy that had a Saksai Waman which is why I didn't go for the 90 minute tour he didn't know the interesting bit of history that I wanted to know he didn't even know which Pizarro was killed at that gate of Saksai Waman that should be basic if you're going to be a guide. Nice guide, but I'm just saying, wasn't the best in terms of historical trivia and knowledge. So that's where I, I walked up. It felt so high up when I was there. Oh, there's a house here. Let's see if it's open. Hi. You guys been on the top? Yeah, it's about 15 minutes, but it's like... Yeah, it's kind of steep, yeah. Oh, you mean the climb up there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, Honestly. cheers, I'll go for it. <laughs> well, let's check out this house first, if we can go in there. No. I can, but there's people down there. So yeah, pro prohibido el paso. Damn it. That's how they roll in, in Italy, close off the, the best places. Let's go up then. And we'll end it up there. Now we're talking. Again, you see from the outside here, these, it looks like crenellations. I'm very, if anyone knows more about Inca warfare than me, please let me hear it, if that is what it is. Or if it's even built, I mean, it may have been that the Spanish kind of fortified this place after conquering uh, the Incas and that they added the crenellations. Either way, I'm curious to know if you know uh, if that's what it is. Again, we have the agricultural terraces down here. So these, uh, there were never houses here. This was always for agriculture and to grow agricultural products as there was not enough arable land down below, as I told you in the last episode. So let's see what lurks around this bend, and then I will end the video there. Hopefully with some battery life left. Well, well, well. More terraces. If you're wondering why I did not go up on that peak, it's because I have climbed enough mountains here now on this trip that to know that the view up there it's not gonna beat anything that I have seen thus far especially not the view sorry bug in my eye the view in in uh, Pisac cool place to wander around in as always so how far is this from that hotel I'm staying at, that cabin hotel, which you saw in my last video? It's through the valley here and just about, it's hard, maybe 30 minutes max, maybe 20 if you drive as fast as the cars, which I, I don't on this crappy bike. Wow, this looks like a little epic look out more houses so should you stay at that cabin as opposed to if you come here as opposed to here I don't know there's nothing up there breakfast was horrendous but hotel breakfasts are always horrendous I would say for just the beauty of the hotel the jacuzzi on the balcony and everything, yeah, stay there uh, as opposed to here. But if you, if you want access to food and, and so on, I mean, I guess this city here is better. Hola. <laughs> selfie spot is all yours. <laughs> There's a selfie queue. I'm gonna finish off. Nice race. Inside. Ooh, just keep coming up with the vocabulary. But then I saw these steps. I was going to say I was going to finish off inside this hut. 
as most men, we do like to finish inside. But not me. I'm an outside man, so I'm gonna trek further up. Man, you can't go into this hut. This is outrageous. No man can finish in such a place. Let's go up these steps, see what we find. Die. Ooh, ooh. Inca steps. Yeah, I saw that. When you see Inca steps, you have to walk on them. And hope they don't break. These are a, a breeze compared to the ones in Pisac. Ah, there's nothing really up here. Oh, well, so I got quite the workout today too. I was able to throw in some history trivia, some dirty jokes that you can have a field day too as well. In other words, a normal Geraldo video. So I think here, this is the goodest place to sign off as any. So, signing off from yet another fantastic day exploring, wandering around in Inca ruins. Burundi. Wasn't gonna leave without showing you what it looks like from below down here. Pretty spectacular. And again, whenever I see the architectural, I guess almost prowess, you can say, of this civilization, it just, just begs to question, you know, how on earth did they fall to so few men? But I've covered the broad strokes of how that was done in the uh, episode I did in Machu Picchu. Both of them touch upon that. So if you're curious to hear more about that, do go and watch my Machu Picchu episodes. Now we're signing off. Actually, I don't think we are. This seems to me to be the remnants of actual dwellings, houses. Hundred percent. It almost looks like military barracks. Seeing as this was a fortification, a fort, that kind of makes sense. Did we fancy a swim today too? One last pan of the camera. I'm gonna leave you with this. I've now seen the three biggest and most famous Inca sites. Machu Picchu, Pisco, the ruins of Pisco, you saw me climb up that mountain, and here in Uliantan Tambo. How do I rate the three? Personally, I rate Pisac number one. After Pisac, Machu Picchu, and then number three would be here. Doesn't mean that this is, this is bad, it just means that the others was just unreal. And since I went there first, your impressions, your senses, everything is kind of heightened. So there's no telling, if I'd come here first, maybe this would be in the top two. But I think for me, the Pisac trek reigns supreme. Burundi. I splint to her coffin and lay on the floor of a vault with her, clasped as the moon hugs the shore. What treachery is this that she breathe no more? Christ, you bastard! 
I wished to run, but the dead adored her. Even wild winds sang in Chora for her. Separate from my heart, from the stars I swore we'd be together. Little love song for Gifaldo as I'm on my way to see him. Do you know what song that was? Major props to you in the comment section. That's my food. That's mine. That's mine.